Good morning. Um, I'd like to start out by thanking um, the folks at the, the uh, at Oshawa, um, and the organizers of the Open Hardware Summit. Thank you very much for, for having me here. I feel very humbled um, to be on this stage with so many other fantastic speakers, um, so many great messages, so many great thoughts about what the, the future of open hardware should look like. Um, so my name is Jason Kreidner. I'm a co-founder of BeagleBoard.org. Um, how many of you have heard of BeagleBoard? All right, I love it. Thank you, thank you. Um, and um, while I'm going, while I'm being interactive, um, I, I, a couple years ago I gave a presentation on um, the right message, right, and really talking about um, uh, the, the, the we need to be reaching out to, to people outside of our own friends and family community, um, and, and talking about like how do we make open hardware and the value of open hardware kind of understandable by the, the, the every person, all right? You know, how do we make it something that everybody understands why they care about us? I think we're really great at serving the needs of other people in our community. Um, and I love to see this community growing, getting stronger all the time. Um, and I love, you know, that we're here in, we're in Portland. There's so many fantastic things going on here. I have um, some family connections here. I love this place. Um, and, uh, you know, I just, uh, you know, I look forward to us taking not just growing our community organically, but how do we take it beyond um, the, the, the friends and family? Um, and the question, one of the questions I asked, um, got a, quite a bit of response from um, uh, bef when, I, when I asked this before in Rome a couple years ago: is How many of you believe that the Raspberry Pi is open hardware? When I when I asked that question in Rome, most of the hands went up. So thank you for, for, for building that understanding. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's been a different picture, and it's nice to see that, that people understand a little bit of what, what the differences are, and I'm really excited that the, um, the folks at Oshawa are starting a certification program, really building awareness of what, uh, what open hardware is. Um, yeah, thank you. Thanks to them. Um, and, and I just wanted to talk about some of the things that, um, that I, I continue to want to see um, folks in the open hardware community um, you know, gain some, some focus on, and I'm hoping that they can learn some lessons from uh, people that have done other collaborative projects and have, and have, have tried to do some, some, some good outreach. So I wanted to talk about Linux and um, at the Google Summer of Code. So um, how many of you have heard of Google Summer of Code before? How many of you participated? Okay. Um, so a lot of you have heard of it and not a lot have participated. So um, it's great that there's that much awareness, um, but um, you know, hopefully we can get that participation level um, a little bit more, a little bit more up. Um, so, so I think it's in, in, important to, to think about um, the, the, the differences between open and, and collaborative. Um, and I really appreciate some of the messages we had earlier about you know, that, that programming is forgetting. Um, and, and understanding our own biases. I, I, really, I really appreciated that, and I really um, think that that, that um, analogy of that, that programming is, is, is forgetting is, is so incredibly apt, um, and it's something that, um, you know, point to, you know, why is, why is Linux and why is collaboration as a model um, so important, right? And it's because, of the, it was exactly because of that, right? The point is to, to forget, and how do we organize ourselves um, in a way such that, um, that, that's, a, that that's a benefit, um, and how do we work on actually preserving knowledge um, through machines um, so that these things can actually move forward. Um, and, and I also appreciated some of the lessons learned coming out of, uh, of you know, failed Kickstarters that turned into success, um, and just the, the, the message there that um, you know, we, we need to um, reach out and work with our community as we're, as we're moving forward, right? That's something that um, um, that we often 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 lose. Um, so just just uh, staying staying in touch and staying interactive um, throughout the the whole process. And I think we can learn some lessons from um, from from these from these projects to move forward. I'll start off with my conclusion. Um, it, it's not a really complicated message that I have for you today. Um, but but um, you know we're really great in the open hardware movement at producing examples for people, and that's what I'll call open. Right, somebody can go and grab that 
um, you know, widget of you know, XYZ to solve a problem. Um, they're going to go take that and they're going to go and solve their, their next problem with it. And there is some positive flow that comes from you know, people having a solution, modifying it, then people kind of, kind of else picking it up and running with it. But it's different than um, a more of a collaborative model, right? So who's doing the best at something and how can I just work with them to make that something better? Um, and that's the thing that Linux does um, really fantastically. You know, whether or not you 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 love um, Linux itself, right? It's it's um it's it's very collaborative, and it's kind of a one place where I can go and improve code. So um, I'm I'm hoping to see the end of things like how many of you heard of MRAA? It's crazy. Nobody's heard of it. Um, so the, <laughs> there's. Um, but people try to solve problems in, in different ways when there's already a way to go out there and solve these problems. Um, and what I want to try and encourage people is to go and, go and find those existing ways and to go and collaborate around projects like Linux um, to, to provide the, the common solutions to things, right? I mean, I think it's, it's wonderful people make all these different solutions, but I think it can be better if we work together. Um, and, and bring people into the fold of, 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 of programs like a Google Summer of Code, right? So I'm glad a lot of you have heard of it. Um, we need you out there mentoring. Um, we need you encouraging students to, to participate. Um, I'm sure there are some other great programs, and, and I'm throwing this out there as maybe other people can provide me feedback of other ways that we can help mentor and, and um, work with students moving forward. Um, and, and a lot of this is also about tools. Um, for really, the, 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 the tools that we work with for building hardware today are very different than the tools that we work for building software today. And a lot of them actually get in the way of collaboration. I know that there are some, some efforts out there um, to build textual-based um, uh, hardware design tools, um, like what we have at the chip level, um, but we really don't have much at the, 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 the board level. Um, and I think there's some efforts to get behind that, and I'd like to see some of that stuff moved um, forward. And of course, you know, always putting in plug for, for BeagleBoard. Um, we're here and are ready to, to collaborate with you. All right, so why is this Linux thing so freaking amazing? Because um, it, it really, really is. Um, so I think that there's uh, something like, uh, I think that the current counts is something like 7,000 lines of code um, added a day, uh, something crazy, crazy like that. So maybe some other people can correct my numbers here. But, um, and you know, that, that just couldn't be done um, in, uh, in, in other organizations, right? I mean, it's the, um, the, the fastest moving software project on earth, right? And it's completely open source. Um, it's used to run everything from um, our, our trading systems on Wall Street um, to our, our web servers at uh, Amazon and Google, um, pretty much everything that, that we're, we're, we're working with today on the, on the internet, um, to um, our mobile phones um, with, with Android. Um, it really is something that, that's everywhere. Um, but yet, the, a, the, a lot of the stuff that we're doing to talk to the physical world, the sensors, um, um, the, the electronics stuff, um, is still moving relatively slowly. A lot of people just, um, you know, it, it's a little bit intimidating um, to them, so they go and create these solutions like MRAA that run everything in user space. Um, just give me the access to that peripheral, I hack it myself. And there's really missing this, this opportunity to share in all the advances that are coming from all these um, other uh, people and companies that are contributing to this, um, to this, this common software base. And I think that you know, BeagleBoard is certainly here to help if you're trying to get started with that, but there's so many other possible resources that you can go to. Um, and you just um, you know, really don't feel like you have to do anything this on your own. There's this, there's this I.O. system called I.I.O. It's very generic. It's the way you talk to sensors in, the, in, the, in Linux. Um, and we'll all get a lot further um, if, we, if we go into the one place. Um, one of the nice things about Linux as well is that it's um, architecture agnostic. Right, so you know, today the hot thing is ARM, and you know, tomorrow you know it, it could still be ARM. It could be low risk. It could be you know, risk five. It could be you know some some uh, other new platform that people people come up with. Um, 
But the fact is that Linux runs on all of them, right? You can you could even run Linux in a web browser. People have actually made simulators in JavaScript that you can boot Linux inside of your web browser, right? It, it literally runs everywhere, right? So so um, um, it's a uh, uh, it's definitely something to, to, to check out. Um, uh, the, the process for getting engaged is actually pretty straightforward. Um, you create a patch um, using a, a tool called uh, Git. Um, um, Linus went on a, um, a, a wild coding spree when he got frustrated with other um, code management tools that are out there, and he went and created this, this tool called, uh, called Git. It just organizes everything in, in patches. Uh, and this comes back to that, that point about you know, programming is forgetting. Um, it, it's, it's actually pretty difficult to kind of, okay, it, Linux can be very intimidating, right? There's, you know, millions of lines of code, you know, why do I want to put that in my project? It's so complicated. I want to just be able to understand everything. But there's actually a very straightforward process of understanding um, what's going on in, in, in Linux because it's written in terms of history, right? Every time there's a change, um, that, that patch, the, the, what, what lines of code were added, um, what kind of lines of code were removed, what kind of uh, lines were changed, is recorded in, in history, in the mailing list, in discussion. Um, before any patch is accepted, you post it to the mailing list, people provide you feedback on the, the code, uh, they tell you their concerns, their, their thoughts, and all that history is recorded in the open um, for all of us to, to, to go from, right? So. Um, you know, if, if, it's a, if it's about forgetting, this is the way you can, you can take forgetting um, and then go back and understand what the assumptions were, right? What, what were the biases that we had when we created this um, piece of code? Um, and then you can go and make the arguments why those biases are wrong and you need to change them, right? Because it's, because it's all there and, and recorded. Um, and if you understand something, how it works or why it was built in a certain way, you simply look at the history, right? It's all searchable. Um, you could dig through it, um, you know, that, that you know who this is coming from and, and why they wanted to go and, and create things. And, um, you know, there's a fantastic tool now. How many of you use GitHub? Um, and probably you all use other Git tools as well, Gitorious or um, what's the new name, uh, GitLabs, right? So there's all these great tools. So it's, it's great to hear that you're already doing that today. It's, um, really from, from making quality software, understanding version control tools, and being able to, to track all that history is incredibly important. Um, and it's a huge part of what makes Linux um, so successful. Um, all right, try to figure out the things I do need to make sure I get, I get plugged in here. Um, so, okay, I hope I've covered a little bit of why Linux is so amazing and, and, and why you should contribute to it. Um, other lessons to learn here from, uh, from, from Google Summer of Code. Uh, so, so Google has been running this program now for, for about um, 11 years um, with 500 plus uh, organizations. Um, people doing open hardware is something new. Um, so in, in the past it's, it's been you know, exclusively focused on software and we fo as BeagleBoard we focused on software projects. Um, you know, not really doing open hardware itself. Um, but then, of course, all the tools that you're working with, things like, like, like KiCad or, or GNU uh, Capture or these other things, there's opportunities for those to become focal points for your projects. There's, you know, I think over uh, 100 different organizations that were mentoring um, the last uh, Google Summer of Code. We've had some really great success stories come out of our community. Um, we had uh, a, a student in Spain um, take an autopilot that was previously for an Arduino, port it to Linux. Um, he then started up his own um, drone company, got funded in Spain, has a building out there, um, lots of, you know, number of employees, very successful business. It started as just an intern at, as Google Summer of Code. Um, and now the Linux Foundation has actually taken on the, the project of maintaining um, autopilots and, and, and Linux called a, a drone code. Right, and then we've had people just you know you know take our, our take our boards and turn them into uh, logic analyzers and and, and build um, uh, build things out of that. But just just a, a huge number of success stories. Don't think I want to go on there too much. Oh, this has got animation. Let's skip that. Uh, no, let's skip all the animation stuff. But I do want to thank you. Know, talk a little bit about how Beagle Board's doing more to try to be more uh, participatory. Um, part of that is we were previously using ORCAD for our um, schematics and, 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 um, and layout. Um, 
which is a fantastic tool and really the right tool for the job for a lot of things, but we've been working on simplifying our board designs so that you can work in a tool like Eagle um, and moving forward, I mean, tools like uh, KiCad. Um, so we've taken the, the, the most complex stuff um, off of our, our boards, uh, 145 components, and put it all into one um, system and package. Um, so one of my, my mentors at, uh, at TI was the inventor of the Speak and Spell. He went off his, his, his new company was to go and create this packaging company. He came to me and said, hey, um, what, can, what, you know, you know, what do you think we should go and make? I said, the first thing we should go and make is a beagle on a chip. Um, and that's making it a whole lot easier for people to make derivatives of Beagle, right? So it's in um, Eagle now um, and a much simpler design. I won't go over all the components and the, the, the junk inside of it, but um, um, just makes it easier. Um, other thing we're doing is we've started a, a logo program. Um, you know, all of our designs are, are open source. We make sure that you can go get those parts from, from the DigiKeys, Mausers, and Element 14s rather than, you know, AliExpress and kind of hoping that you, you get them. Um, we make sure that, that people actually can um, replicate the things that, that we're doing. Um, of course, we have a fantastic partnership with um, Seed Studio guys. They're here. They've created the, um, uh, the BeagleBone Green and actually helped lower um, the price for, for getting uh, BeagleBones. We've had, um, we work with the local manufacturing uh, in, in Michigan. Um, we we'll work with the large guys, uh, Element 14, um, and a number of other people adding value. Um, and we're really open to, to bringing on more people that want to, to logo um, certify their boards um, so that they, they are supporting the, the, the BeagleBoard uh, community. Um, but of course, if you want to take the design and make your own boards and do other things um, without us, um, there's nothing stopping you um, from doing that. But we do appreciate people that, um, that, that join the community. Um, that's my one minute wrap up sign. So I'm just going to go back over my, my key points. Um, Kind of a simple talk today, but I, but I, I do hope that some of you um, are, walk away from here thinking about um, doing things in these large collaborative projects um, and how you go and advance the tools that we're working with for, for board design today uh, to make sure that they can be collaborative. So we can use tools like, like Git and manage history, work in a textual way, uh, work in, a, in, a, in an open email um, type of, of environment. Um, and of course, if you, if you have any interest to work with BeagleBoard, you know, feel, please feel free to, to contact me. I really appreciate you guys' time, and it really feel, feels like family um, when I'm here and I'm speaking with the folks at the Open Hardware Summit. So um, thank you very much for your time.